So today I'm wearing my bad apron, my old apron, because I am going to probably be getting pretty dirty with this wool that I am processing. It's got a lot of dirt in it and the first step to this process for me is combing it because I find that that releases a lot of the dirt before I even wash it. And it also opens if there's any locks or dreads. Um, I guess if, if you don't know what locks are, basically dreads, mats, um, it'll open them up and that way they're easier to process and there's less chance, I think, of felting when you wash them. Um, so I'm gonna get to it. I'm in my fiber studio, which is also my room, and I just found more of my unicorn power scour. I don't know if you can read this on um, the screen correctly, but this is what I use to wash my wool. It is specifically designed to condition the wool and remove lanolin without stripping it. So the wool is still got its nice soft qualities and it's um, smooth against your skin. Hi! So I'm going to film the video like this so you can see my face. Um, this is the unicorn and I've got to get it open. And I'm just gonna pour one capsule into the water. And this water, you're supposed to get it to a um, hundred and, I think it's like 145 and that. Uh, but like no sink is really gonna go to 145. So really you just, if you're doing this at home the best option really is to just get your sink as hot as it goes. Mine can go up to, I think 128 was what it maxed out at. So I usually start filling when the water hits 113. I always keep my handy dandy instant read thermometer um, there. You could use a heat gun. Um, but yeah, so now I've got the soap in the water and I can add my basket of wool and I don't swish it around because that can make it felt so I just don't do that just let it sit in the water and wait 15 minutes and this is what the wool looks like right now it's in its second wash so we'll get to see that water and what it looks like after a second wash. So the next step is for um, once it your timer goes off for 15 minutes soak, you want to put your lid on or you want to take your um, wool out of the tub and you want to drain it, let all the water out. But you don't have to worry about getting everything out because we're going to spin it and that helps you get the water out without like messing with the wool. And then this is the water. This is from the second wash. And I'm just gonna pour it out. And then I will put in the basket at the top. And you wanna give it several good goes. Stop. And see how much water I got from that? That's, that's significant. So I'm gonna give it a second go. And usually all I need is two goes. Doesn't really matter if it stops all the way. And 
add some water. And then I'll just leave this outside while I, or you can bring it in, but I'm just gonna let it continue dripping and drying. And go fill up a third tub of water. That's usually all I need, um, depending on how dirty your wool is. Um, but usually three is good for me and um, the water should be significantly more clear. And then once it's all done, these little pieces of grass and everything, you can pick that out by hand. Tedious, but this is what we do it for. The love of the sheep and the natural art. The breed of the week this week is Suffolk Sheep Wool, and um, I have it in its first wash here. This was not very dirty, um, low VM, low vegetable material, and we're going to go see how dirty that water is and how clean the wool looks. So this wool was not very dirty, dirty so I didn't comb it first with my wool last week. I combed it because it was high VM, high dirt, and it just shook out some of the dirt from the wool before I even washed it. So this is what our wool is looking like first wash. Very nice. This is what our water looks like. Go ahead and dump that. And then we'll give this a few spins. And one more wash, I think. Uh, maybe two. Yeah. Sometimes that comes off right when you start. It's not situated on there right. See, lots of water. already looks like so fluffy like I just want to like lay in a pit of this <laughs> I'm gonna go get the water ready for bath number two and with this um, water bath that I did I added in some lavender oil because I had found some moth evidence and that's supposed to um, kill moths keep them away So this is the water after the second wash and it looks pretty clear to me. The wool looks pretty clean. So I'm going to leave it at this um, and not do a third bath. Or, you know, just for the heck of it, I'll do a third bath because I have more of this. And if I don't notice that there's a significant difference from a third bath, then I won't do that on the rest of this that I have to wash up. So this that I have in the wash today is Merino. And um, Merino uh, is a very fine wool and um, you have to be more careful with it because it can felt easier. Um, so I just soaked it here in my salad spinner I'm about to take it out. This is its first soak, and then we'll see how dirty that water is and uh, get it in a second soak. Here's the dirty water next to the slightly less dirty wool. What do you think, Possum? He's unsure. Um, but we're gonna get this in another wash. I have a feeling this is gonna need to be combed um, after it's dry. And this is what the wool looks like after all the water has um, been spun out after the first wash. It looks significantly more clean. I'm, I know it looks really dirty because there's a lot of little specks of grass in it. But other than that, like the dirt 
is pretty much off of it. But we're going to give it another wash and have another look. So today in the world of wool, I am processing some tarhi um, wool and I have it in its first wash. I'll give you guys a look at um, how dirty it looks, how clean it looks. Um, and then we'll show uh, wringing out the bucket and I'll show um, what the wool looks like after all the water has been spun out and um, we'll get it in a second wash. All right, I'll show you guys. So this is the first wash of the Tarhi wool. And um, I'm gonna lift it out. It seems to do better if I tilt it a little bit. You would think it would be the opposite because flat there's I don't know, gravitational pull through the holes, but it just seems to work better on its side, draining. And um, I'll let that sit here and drain a little bit, but you can see how clean it is. And um, here's the dirty water. And actually I'll pull this up here and dump this down here. And we'll give it a spin. So here is the Tarhi wool, and this is after its second bath. And I'm gonna pull it out here, give it a look, see. My cat possum is out here. That's it, and this is the water, so considerably less sturdy um it was really interesting there was like this like reddish grit in here so that was really cool to see because i think that is like an indicator of red clay being in the soil so interesting So this is wash number three, and I can still see just like a little bit of dirt. So I'm gonna take a look at that. And I had picked through the wool a little bit, pulling it apart to try and allow some of that dirt and soil to just um, escape. But, okay, well, I'll, t I'll take a look at that. Let me, the water looks pretty clean, but I'm kind of thinking I want one more wash. Um, yeah. We'll get that wrung out and um, do one more wash. So today I am doing a test wash on some Gulf Coast native 
pretty dirty um, raw wool in this soak soap. Um, and this is the mint um, scent. And I also put in a few drops of lavender and that helps to keep away moths. And um, I'm just gonna let it soak for 15 minutes and then I'm gonna drain and see how dirty the um, water is and see how much dirt it got out of the wool and we will come to a verdict on whether we like it or not for washing raw wool because this is specifically designed for washing your knitwear. Um, so I don't know how it will um, function in the place of washing raw wool, but that's what we're testing today. Um, and I got this from Over the Next Row Knits in Norton Commons. So this is the verdict. What does soak soap do to raw wool? It cleans it pretty darn well. I am very happy with this. This is two capfuls of soak soap and four drops of lavender. And this is the first wash. I'm gonna do another wash and we'll see what the effect of that is. So right now I'm trying to finish up processing all of this Gulf Coast native wool. This is all the washed wool and this is my fleece and fiber source book and I'm putting all of the dizzed fiber into this bag. Um, yeah, so just processing this and then we'll see if we can spin it up. But um, yeah, I don't know how impressed I am with this fiber um, just because I just worked with the Suffolk um, wool and that was like, a dream <laughs> it was amazing and I've heard that Suffolk wool is like not good so I'm like if this is less good than the Suffolk but I really loved the Suffolk so anyways I have yet to finish it and then I can make my verdict Percy say cheese the word cheese. Meow meow. Alrighty my friends this was the third wash and the water is pretty clean now. Um, I'm gonna call it quits here and get some more in the wash and maybe I will do another wash of this later but right now what I've been doing is kind of just three for everything so Yep, so I decided I wanna wash one more wool um, in the soak soap before I fully endorse it, but I absolutely am loving it so far. So let's see what one wash does so to this wool. Now I have some Romney wool, raw wool, and I am washing it in soak soap. And, um, I added a couple of drops of lavender and here we can add the wool to the water. But Possum is very excited about this. He's ready for some clean wool. Oh, this is hot. Bobby, I know you're trying to help. Okay, so we're gonna wait 15 minutes and give that a look. So the verdict is yes, I do really like the soak soap for washing wool 
even my raw wool. I'll do a video washing some of my garments in this, but for now, oh my gosh, this works fabulous for washing wool. So the wool of the week this week is merino, which is probably one of the most popular wools. Um, they're often uh, produced in New Zealand and um, they're not often produced in Kentucky where I live because there's some problems with foot rot because it's so muddy here. But, um, I got a hold of some merino and I'm not totally sure where it came from, where it was produced, but um, it was a little dirty and I washed it and now I'm going to comb it to kind of open the locks. It has a beautiful crimp to it, um, but there's still a little bit of vegetable material or vm as we call it in the wool world um so i am going to film as i go and get to it Who's ready to make some yarn? So today I'm spinning some Tarhi wool, Tarhi breed sheep, um, and this was raw wool for my project Wool of the Week, um, wherein I'm going from raw to a finished product um, with my wool in a breed study. This wool is such a pleasure to work with, honestly. I washed it the same as I do my other wools in water and wool wash. And for this one, I used soak, uh, soak soap and um, some lavender essential oil and it smells fantastic all the stuff that i've been washing with the lavender oil just like smells fantastic um and the vegetable material the vm just kind of fell right out of this wool it washed really well and i don't know if the crimp and the micron count has anything to do with how dirty the wool can get. I'm gonna have to research that, but um, this is a really like springy wool. The merino from last week was a little bit more, I don't know, smooth and fine. This is like springy, bouncy, does seem to have more volume. 
um, but it didn't seem all that dirty. And I think in the Merino, one of the problems was that it just had like pulverized hay in it. And um, that was really hard to get out. And it just kind of like went into the finished yarn. But this, anything that's left is just coming right out and I'm coming to the end of my yarn that I'm making. Some people are like, how do you top and spin? Well, it's, I don't know, it takes some time to learn how to do it. And also my brain is being pulled in like 30,000 different directions, but I'm just swinging with it. Um, but I really have loved spinning this. Honestly, I was like, I got up early this morning and I was like, you know, I'm just gonna spin, I'm not gonna video. And I'll just like take pictures of the finished product. But I really am glad that I did this little talk here at the end because this wool really deserves a talk. Um, it's awesome. And I can't wait to do the breed roundup read information roundup later on this week. Um, but yeah, this has just been a pleasure to work with and I'm excited to do some more research into the breed itself and look and see what the author of the Fleece and Fiber Source book, um, what their wool looked like when she was doing tests for the book um but yeah so I've come to the end of my fiber I've come to the end of my yarn and um now it is time to ply like time to fly time to ply thank you So today for you all, I have some merino wool that I actually combed and I'm going to see if my great wheel likes it at all for making yarn. And you're supposed to spin woolen on um, the great wheel, but this is technically worsted, and that um, definition comes from the way that you prepare your fiber. Oh. Now, I've run into just a little problem, which is that my weeder string became un untied um, from around. Okay, so that's just going to be messed up. Oh, Lord, I know I can do this, I know I can do this. Minor technical difficulty. All right, so I got it working again. And I only saved a tiny bit of this merino 
to do on my great wheel. So this is just, just a little test. Um, nothing, nothing special, no big project. Um, I just got my great wheel one weekend ago and less than a week ago, I started learning how to spin on it. So I'm thinking this is like pretty good for the progress I'm making. I haven't done that many spins on it. This is my fourth test spin. And I know you're not supposed to park and draft on a great wheel. You're supposed to do long draw, but hey, it's art, it doesn't matter. Um, and we're always open to learning new things, aren't we? So have fun with art, you know? Invent new things. But so basically what I'm doing here is I'm just turning this wheel, which is turning this wheel, which is turning this spindle, which is adding twist to this string here. And I stop it with my fingers from getting into this part where to where I can draft out the fibers and let them become a somewhat uniform string on how, how, how thick the string is, um, how thick the yarn is, which is called its weight. And um, you want that to be uniform when you're using yarn for like knitting or something, unless it's like a special, special purpose thicker yarn. Um, then, then you would have a thicker yarn, but so I've come to the end of my fiber here and you do kind of want to leave a little poof at the end of your fiber always for, if you're adding more fiber, it's easier to add in a poof than to add in like a sliver because you want it to be poofy. So the fibers mix together and it creates a good join. Um, so I'm going to take this back. You unwind it to wind it on in an organized way. And then with this, you have to wind it down the um, point to where you're at the point where you can spin off of the point. And I'm just going to attach that poof right there so I can start my next spin. And I'm going to film three weeks of Great Wheel videos right now. My next spin for today is going to be spinning darky wool on a Great Wheel. My Great Wheel is behind me here and I have the previous week's Great Wheel spin on here. This is Merino, but this is Tarky wool. I have some that I dyed and some that I just prepped. I did prep this before I dyed it, but that kind of like ruined the prep. Um, so I'm unsure of whether I want to spin this in what's called a row log. I think I will just, just to show the difference, but this is combed top. I combed this on wool combs and dizzed it out. And um, this was combed and dizzed, but now it's going to be carded into a roll log. Um, and I'll show you what all that is. Um, so the difference between these is that this will be a worsted spin and this will be a woolen spin. And that refers to whether the fibers are going straight up and down or whether they're all mixed together, which is what this will be. So I'm gonna go get my carding brushes and card this into a roll log. So these are what we call hand cards. And I'm going to card this fiber up. So I'll just lay it onto the card. It looks like I'm gonna have a big one and a little one. And I'll 
brush it from the opposite side and doff it. And then brush. I think you're supposed to do it from the other side. Brush. And doff. And now I will make a roll log where you just kind of roll this up. I'm trying to do it so you can see and pick up and roll. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. I know on a blending board, you can use a stick or two sticks. And I'm sure I'll show that one day, but here's a roll log. It's supposed to be kind of like a tube. So we'll do one more. So now I'm going to spin this turkey. This is just purple, and that way I can see a difference from what I was spinning. See, and I just don't, don't particularly, maybe I'm just getting it going, but I want it to be even, and it kind of just like feels like it's not gonna like I don't know. Trust the process. Trust the process. Trust the process. I want this to draft out a little bit more. But... If I like put pressure on that point, it's not good. It can snap the band off. It can move that piece, but I have it stuck on with some wool so that hopefully it doesn't move. Okay, that's a lot better. That's a lot better. I can already feel it just like pulling on that point. I can see it. I don't wanna put pressure on that. But I do want, you know, a relatively thin, even yarn. So, pros and cons. Weighing the options. Add a little bit more twist and then I have another roll out of this. See, there we go. What do we do with this? We hold it on top and then you can oh, take the wool. There we go. And I have a little groove on my wheel up here, so that kind of like helps it. Okay. I 
I have a timer that's about to go off. See if we can get this done in one minute. I can like hear it bouncing off of that point with like weight, with pressure. I'm just gonna park and draft for the rest of this because that's like what's working for me to make a pretty yarn that I like actually like, actually am proud of. And that, this like fiber prep is like good for parking and drafting, perfectly fine. It's maybe just like my not good skills at making a roll log that's making this difficult for me. Timer's going off. All right, so let's finish up this spin. And then I'll show you the worsted spin of the combed top that is undyed. I can't wait to get this like off the spindle here and see like what the actual yarn looks like. This is just like such a peaceful process, peaceful activity, meditative, honestly. Not only is it like a movement practice, you're like moving your body to do this, you are creating art and you are experiencing the forces of physics um because this is physics you know this is like i don't know i know it's physics it has to do with like rotations and momentum and pressure and uh, surface area and stuff It's like, I guess, functional physics. And when you're doing other forms of spinning, like with a drop spindle, you're working with gravity. I mean, you're working with gravity here, but. And sometimes when you're working with fiber, like you'll see me like picking out a tiny bit of it. That's because it's like a wool neck, which is like little bitty short baby fibers that have like belted together. And that's no good for spinning. That's just gonna leave a lump in your spinning, so. And I've come to the end of this and I'll go ahead and grab my combed top, distribute the fibers around there a little bit, travel, let some twist travel in. Give a little draft to start out with. Whoop! <laughs> Too much pressure. Too much pulling. Park. 
that. That's absolutely beautiful. See, sometimes you can just let it like glide out of your hand. And this, you just don't want to add pressure. You want to let it glide, let it glide, add twist. And you just add like ever so much pressure to get the twist to kind of like set in there. Whoop. Add some pressure to get my spindle turning again. There we go. draft and here with my little way that I've that I've organized my combed top in like a little sweet roll I'm gonna see if that will kind of give me an effect of spinning from the fold is what they call that where you're spinning from fibers that are like laid on top of each other and no it's just not working like that it's just not really wanting to do the long draw i can let me see trust the process trust the process Maybe I can do more long draw when I'm like out at the, where there's less, less pull over an area overall when I'm, when I'm adding the, the pull, the pressure of drafting the fibers, of pulling them apart. Cause that's what all, what this all is all about is pulling apart fibers. And with, with parking and drafting, you can kind of like feel the tightness of the yarn and the strength of it because you don't want like a weak yarn. That's not going to like fly for knitting when you're adding tension. When you add tension to a string, you know, that string has to be strong in order to withstand that pull. I'm going to call what I do just like breaking the rules of spinning. Creating new rules, that's what I'm doing. Creating new techniques, new practices.
and I think it's okay to not be historically accurate like all the time so long as you're not like claiming that that is historically accurate you know if you're not historically accurate be honest about it but you can still do what you're doing you know if you're having fun you're making art do it show you guys the other the other technique you see me like holding this way above my head but you can do it another way um, so it's not like above your head I just think maybe I haven't like worked it out all the way yet because I'll, I'll show you like why what, what problem I run into So, what you're wanting to do is hold it down and then, see this is my problem, you can like hold it this way, but you're moving backwards and this is getting smaller, so, I don't know, I don't know. And I'm coming to the end here. I'm doing several spins just because it's like easier when you're doing when you're doing test spins to attach them to each other and then just like break them off when you get when you're you know taking it off the spindle um break it apart into the different yarns that it is. Um, so that you can like wind up one at a time. Um, but it's just easier to do them where you stick them together versus starting a new, a new spin each time. Leave a little bit of fluff. And I'll catch up with y'all later. So my video for the wool of the week is getting quite long and I have decided that the best way to mitigate this is to make it two videos. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and post this first edition of Wool of the Week and get that up um, so that you guys can enjoy it and then we will regroup for the second half of Wool of the Week. I have several more breeds and then a really cool project. So I hope you guys will stay tuned and um, join us for both halves of the series. Thank you for watching.